William Hill sponsors Joshua vs. Brazil on Sky Sports Box Office. Yeah, you know, it was weird. I thought you could go in there and bomb them out in two rounds. And <coughs> the two fights I could say I've learned a lot in was one Dylan and then that one because like six rounds in, seven rounds in, I started thinking there's guys that are going to be able to stand up to the power. Nine rounds in, ten rounds in. So um, when you're loading up, trying to knock them out, it does take a lot of energy. So yeah. you've got to control the fight. And I just learned that. Just break them down bit by bit rather than trying to knock them out with single punches. And uh, I just took my time and I finally found the shots that would take him out. Is that why you stood off him a bit when he first wobbled? Yeah, yeah, because what he was going to do, uh, if, sometimes if I go rushing in, it's easy to get caught with a, with a big hook or something. Um, and it changes the course of the fight. So I didn't want that to happen, so I just was a bit patient. So the, the second or third round, he caught him with a big right uppercut and, it looked, and he staggered all the way back to the corner. I thought, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then he was still in there. And I was, I was, I was, that's what I mean. And I started realising that Sometimes, no matter what shots you're throwing and how flushed they are, some people are, are here to stay. Even if they're not there to win, they want to put up a good, a good fight and, and show themselves out to the public that they're, that they're serious contenders. And um, I think he was one of those fighters. So when I hit him with the uppercut, I thought, all right, he's going to go here, but he stayed in for a couple more rounds, so credit to him. So is it fair for us to call this, or you to call it a learning fight for you? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, just put your punches in bunches and just break them down little by little. But the main thing is don't get hit on the return. When you're being patient, you don't want to be taking shots while you're trying to break them down. So it was a bit, it's a, it's a, it's a good mind game. It plays mind tricks because you're breaking them down, being patient. But that <coughs> patience, you're giving them an opportunity to break you down as well. So you've got to be on the ball all the time. You could miss him with the jab. Do you think that was the one that softened him out? Yeah, and yeah. then side throwing it to the body a bit. And then I think, because, um, they, they tuck up like that, so the right hand doesn't really go through around the side. So when I started bringing it through the middle, I think that the jab, jab to the stomach, and the uppercut was start, starting to slam down a bit. Did you ever doubt that you might not get him out there at all? You might have to go the distance? I was going to, yeah. You sometimes think, all right, I'm going to take it the distance. It's not always I'm going to go in there and knock him out. It is boxing. and then, But with that, with the patience, I could see he was getting broken down. His eyes started to swell up. His nose was going. So I could see that sooner or later he'll go, but I thought if it goes 12 rounds, it would be a good landing fight for me. There wasn't much of a celebration when you got the final stop, you just kind of wandered into the middle of the ring. What were you, what were you thinking? What was the feeling? Thank God for that. Huh? Thank God for that. Yeah, thank God for that. <laughs> I was just like, ah. Oh. You know, it's been hard. I only had two weeks off. So it's been like, um, you train for like three months and just lockdown. Like you're on lockdown for three months. Then I had two weeks off, which was work. It wasn't even like I was chilling out with the family, then straight back in camp. So to get Dominic out of there was like a relief that I can finally have a bit of rest. And then when, when are we planning to go again, do you think? Well, November, but I mean, <clears throat> he won't say because, but he, his camp for this was, you know, he had a, a virus for a couple of weeks. Yeah. And he was, you know, there were times when we were considering taking a fight or not. And uh, after the Martin fight, you know, because of, the commercial deals and Freddie does a great job for him. You know, it was it's just been non-stop dinners, <laughs> broadcasters, sponsors, and the one worry going into his fight was was burning. I think I might have said it to to a couple of you. And uh, he needs a long rest now. He needs to go and be a young man, <laughs> just go and sit on a beach with his mates and mess around because he's been it's been absolutely relentless. I, taking him out of the weigh-ins and the workouts, people throwing themselves at the car, hundreds of people mm. running down the road chasing the car. What camping outside his hotel in Canary Wharf and, and trying to find him? It's, 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 it takes a lot out of you, and I think the, the the celebrations was more of a relief. He's so happy. I've not seen him this happy after a fight. <laughs> not because of his performance, but because he knows it's over, and he knows now that he, he can have his rest, and it's much, much, much needed. No, I'm not sparring him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I've made up my mind, I'm not going to go and spar him. You're obviously going to spend a little bit of August in Rio anyway, with yeah. the Olympics commentating, <laughs> because, and cheerleading the team. Yeah, because I've got a good, good relationship with the boys. I know them, I've known them for years. And um, so it'll be good to speak about them firsthand. So what they're like behind closed doors, what they're like in the gym. So it'll be good. So I'll be doing some commentary work on them at, at the Olympics. 
Really Would it be a holiday before that then? Um, main thing, I think, I really want to catch up with my family, just spend some nights at home, because I only spend, you know, Saturday and Sunday at home, and that's really, do my, get my washing done and pack it again for, to go again. That's what, it's, that's what it's been. So I want to just catch up with my family first before I think of a holiday. Didn't really almost seem happy. I knew I was going to get him out of there sooner or later. I knew it, so I just like I just couldn't wait for that moment. I was like, it's coming, it's coming. But as I said, in in the meantime, when I'm being patient, he's he weren't too good coming forward or going back. But what he was doing, he he has these big swings, and then with ten ounce gloves, it takes one shot. So I had to be careful. So I was just waiting. I just that smile was like, I know it's going to come, and I can't wait. Just before you finish the box, you were too close. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Snap you in the ground. Sometimes yeah. that's what it takes, and um, I'm glad it's not too detrimental. But sometimes it does take a punch to make you realise that you're in a fight. You you can be taken out, and that's how quick it can change. That's what I mean, and that's why I took my time when I hurt him because I can be doing well. Next minute I rush in, as you said, hits me with two shots, and it changes the course of the fight. So, and. Uh, and it would be a massive upset, so I just got to be very cautious. In what was the harder fight, white, Dillian or? Uh, white. Yeah, 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 definitely white. Yeah, um, it was a different kind of fight, wasn't it, as well? Well, he was trying to get up in your face at the end of rounds. Yeah, yeah I know. he was, wasn't he? <laughs> it's funny, like, I just know that's all acting. I was like, get back to your corner. <laughs> but I think we'd slap he him and send he, him back to his corner. He, sho he shoved Howard Foster out of the way as well. Did I? Yeah, well, again. Yeah, but second round, <laughs> well, he was hurt, and Howard jumped in and went, oh, he'd yeah. done, a, he done an Ian John Lewis, didn't he? Yeah, he and then he went, you that. went to him, get out of the way. Because I think if they're going to stop it, but they, they should let me finish it more. <laughs> that's all. Mm. How does that, where does that place uh, Anthony now, as far as options go, either domestically or, or in other parts? Well, I mean, firstly, that we, we can't comment too much on that because we don't know the ins and outs, but yeah. our conversations with Peter Fury were to look at the Fury fight for November, December of this year or spring, summer of next year, but you never know with Tyson Fury how long someone like that's going to be in the game. Not, not because of what we've seen in the papers, just because he's a little bit out there, isn't he? And, and how long he'll keep winning. So, you know, we've spoken about that fight and it was like, maybe we'll take it in the winter, but that's kind of make, made up our decision for us, not the story, but the injury, you know, post today. So I think, you know, we'll see what happens with, with the inquiry, but, you know, we're doing our thing and uh, we want to get all the belts. If that means those belts become vacant, I see Deontay Wilder calling out, AJ's name tonight because everybody's calling his name out. Oscar De La Hoya just tweeted, uh, Luis Ortiz is the best heavyweight in the world. Let us fight you now. There's not a heavyweight in the world that doesn't want to fight Anthony Joshua because they all tune in. And, you know, Charles Martin's obviously told him there's a few quid on the table. <laughs> so, you know, but, but ultimately, we're going to do the right fights. We like the Joseph Parker fight. You know, that's the mandatory. We'll have to deal with that at some point. Now, whether that's in November, December, or whether that's in March or April, it's a good fight, good undefeated, hungry fighter. Um, you know, and Takam was in the crowd. Yeah, Takam. Yeah, you know, done, yeah, yeah, gave him a Takam wave. Yeah. Gave him a wave. Yeah. yeah. Could but, they compete with you to put that on, on his side of the room? No. It's a 75-25 purse split, so like, they'd have to pay him like double-digit millions. Which he might go for that. You know, he likes New Zealand anyway. I'm sure. <laughs> That'll go down well. You're fighting Parker, but it's in New Zealand. Obviously, you've been busy in the last hour or so, but what's your reaction to the story about Tyson Fury? I'll be honest, I haven't heard too much about it, but it's been a hot subject when we've been speaking for the last couple mm. of weeks. And um, it's a shame because he's worked hard to get where he is. And uh, I just hope that he can overcome it and get back to winning ways because it's a fight that everyone wanted to see and something I was serious about. So... Um, I just hope that it's nothing too serious. I don't know if it's been 100% proven or, I don't know the story, but I just hope that it's not too serious so me and him can continue on our, on our collision course sometime in the near future. Does this mean someone like Deontay Wilder is the other world champion? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The good thing I said, like, I am, I'm in a good position, like, Wilders, Furies, Hayes, 
any one of them. Do you know what I mean? We've got a good list to pick out of, and they all they all want me. So um, that's that's a fight we'd like to build man. towards a dual pay per view in uh, on Showtime and yeah. and Sky here. So we need probably a couple more fights, maybe even a fight in America in early yeah. 2017. When is um, he fighting well done? He's fighting uh, Ariola in July, is it? July, July 16th. 16th. Yeah. yeah, so it'd be good to watch that as well. So he gets on. So yeah. He might go to that. Yeah, that would be nice. That would be nice. But I, I think it would be class to fight in there. Oh, was it in Alabama? <laughs> Fuck that. You've got to keep it real. Thought it was in Vegas, wasn't it? <laughs> Yeah, good idea. Yes, yes. In the, in the bars. You're going to watch the Deontay Wilder fight in the casino. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, you know, we, we, either, we either fight in early November, which is the last time we'll get a chance to have a, a voluntary, or we can fight in December and ask for an exception. If we do that and it's granted, which it probably will be, we would have to fight Parker next. So basically, Parker's, the Parker fight's going to happen either in November, December, or March, April. But there's so many, you know, we're looking at the Fury fight, if Klitschko might be given a belt back. I mean, I don't know, you know, I mean, that's a fight we'd love as well. We want to build towards the Wilder fight. But, but I think tonight was, I always said when we, when we accepted the Martin fight, AJ was going to have to learn on the job a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And that's what tonight was perfect for. You know, it was a... Uh, it was always tougher than expected, yeah, wasn't it? it was. So, so if it's on the table, you take Klitschko next? I mean, well, a lot know. of things have to be right with that fight, but I'm always reluctant to make a fight of that magnitude in November, December. You know, but again, these guys aren't going to be around forever. That's true. So, it's, you know, speak to the trainers and, and see, but... The main thing now is I'm so excited for him to have a rest. Honestly, I can't tell you how excited I'm to have a rest. Go on, you call them all out. No, right? sure. <laughs> He's sitting down his bed. He practices at home, but he never does. <laughs> go, I'm coming for you. Deontay. <laughs> you ask me about him. Yeah, they're great fighters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's coming. It's coming, honestly. Yeah. And it'd be tough. It's not easy in there, but you've got to fight the best and learn, right? So it's going to come sooner or later. No problem, no problem with me. Got any feedback from Showtime? Yeah, it's Stephen Espinosa emailed me before the fight and just said the interest has been huge, you know, it's really building nicely. Um, it's unusual for them to do a deal like that with a British fighter. Yeah. Um, and we're, we're really pleased, but it's not just, we've got to do deals like that in every market and we're seeing now, you know, whether it's France, whether it's Japan, you know, whether it's Germany, Australia, the broadcasters are paying more money and showing more interest. So. We've, got, we've had approaches from Africa, from United Arab, Arab Emirates, from China, to bring him there and have fights. And that's something I'd like to do. You know, we did it around the UK, but I'd like him to fight, potentially in China, certainly in America, you know, Dubai. And it, it's a long journey, he's 26 years old. Do you know what I mean? So when we talk about Klitschko and Wilder, you, you've got one side, you've got the fan pressure, and then you've got the other side is doing the right thing. And, you know, it's hard to sit there as a promoter and say, we're going to take our time, we're yeah, going to yeah. take the right fights. But he's 26, so we don't want to be balls deep in those fights at 26. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so, yeah. that's, everyone says that around my way. That's the way it works. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. It's done before and it was made massive news and it was history. So, um, I think it'll be massive. I think that would be massive. I wouldn't turn the opportunity down. Brilliant. Nigeria. To be Nigeria. And yeah. Or Ghana. Either one's good for me. But anyway. Anyway. There's no there's no way I wouldn't fight. To me it's just another fight, but it would be class. I think the history of it, um, it, it would work. And it's if the big man would make it work, then why not? It's groundbreaking. I think a lot of what we're doing at the moment, away from boxing as well, is it's 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 an honour to be associated with because we've got brands knocking at the door, at Freddie's door, that have never even looked at boxing. You know, Lucasade, Beats, Under Armour. You know, it's, but it's like, good for everyone, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's great, especially you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't win. I can't. <laughs> no. It's, it is because I think, I mean, talking about beats, you know, the guy here tonight, the president, president 
he was like, what an event. Wow, I can't believe it. The atmosphere. I don't think he's ever been to a boxing match. Or if he has, he's been to America where you could hear a pin drop. Mm-hmm. So you never know. Beats might turn around and say, you know, we want five or six young fighters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Lucas Aid might say, we're going to start a campaign in boxing. Yeah. But it's been a while since a heavyweight's had sponsorship. No, but it's been a while since any fighter has had sponsorship outside of a gaming company. I mean, Mayweather. No, no, but even Mayweather just started, you know, he sold himself to Hublot for the Pacquiao fight. It was like the first time he's done it. But, you know, yeah, again, he's set up, you know, he, again, he likes to be forward thinking, breaking barriers. He set out his own management company for his commercial run by Freddie and, you know, moved away from the agency side, doing it all himself. It's, you know, he's a, he's a smart, smart kid. Smart, smart. Did smart. you get a sense it was bigger this week? It felt the whole I think it hit me when I got to the weigh-in. The yeah, the weigh-in. When I got to the weigh-in, that's when I was mm. like, wow. Mm. Yeah, that was really, that was different. Um... I just can't afford to mess up. Boxing's a, a real brutal sport. You can be up there and then one mistake, you're, you're on the downslide. So I just can't afford to mess up. But it's definitely growing. And as I said, I'd never put it down to me. You've got great fighters on the undercard, good promoters, you guys, Freddie, my family and friends that are doing like, things behind the scenes. Everyone is driving you know, this train, this hype train forward. So um, it's everyone putting in their input. So uh, I never put it just down to me, but I definitely think that as a whole, the brand of boxing uh, is coming back to the golden times, the golden era. And I think that's why people want them wilder fights, fury fights, because that's the ones that, that, that last in people's memories for years to come. You know, Dominic Brazil think that was fun, now they want to know what's next. When are we going to get that exciting fight? So they're waiting for that memory catching fight. So I think we're back, we're back, we just got to capture their imagination with these massive fights. Did he bring out a different side of you having that to defend? No, nah, no. Nah. That's why none of the boys come in like flashing it in the air and all that stuff. We're not really like that. Um, with or without the belt, we fight the same way. It's a pleasure. This is the rewards of it. But, you know, I won't let these things define me because uh, I've got a lot more to give. You know, and if it did define me, then I wouldn't fight with the same hunger. So, yeah. Really, what about the fact that you Um... Again, you know, 60 days is the analysis, but very, very impressive and solid. Uh, very similar, looks like. But again, I can't tell you the exact numbers, but you'll probably phone me tomorrow for it. But, but no, very, very, very solid. And, you know, I think everyone had a good night. I thought the Groves Murray fight was a cracking fight yeah. at Eubank. Their main fight was good, and, you know, the response has been, been good. Yeah. Yeah, man. I had fun. I had fun. When's your next show? Leeds, July 30th, you coming? Like, yeah, I'll come down. Yeah, don't, don't talk bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> you don't no, have I'm to. not going. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm phoning you on fight week. Mate, um, <laughs> we're in Leeds, but you ain't turned up. <laughs> nah, you don't stop. Nah. You don't stop. Listen, guys, it's two o'clock in the morning. Thank Is you it? so much for staying. I really appreciate, I appreciate it. it. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Thank you. Sponsors Joshua vs. Brazil on Sky Sports Box Office.